girlies and welcome back to the pod. Today we are having one of my favorite types of episodes. Um, If you've been listening to the pod, you probably know what I'm about to say. Also, if you just saw the title of this episode, we are doing fall book recommendations, okay? And if you're new to the pod, um, I do book recommendations usually like once every season. So like fall books, winter books, spring books, summer books. Um, And I do have a playlist on my YouTube channel if you want to find all those episodes easier. It's under like book recs or something. Um, So if you're interested in hearing more books or want to hear about a specific type of book, let's say you want to hear more about beachy romance reads and you would listen to my summer book episode or maybe you want more spooky scary ones listen to my fall books whatever um so definitely check that out if you are interested also y'all um what was i just gonna say i don't know but yesterday i felt like a normal person for the first time in a while and you're like Carmen what are you talking about that's kind of weird why are you saying that okay let me tell you um so I don't have one of those like tracking things that tracks your steps but my phone tracks my steps this is so random um so like it's not really accurate but like if I have my phone in my pants or like in my hand or something whatever when I'm walking it like counts my steps And the other day I went on like multiple walks because I'm watching my dog and no one else is here. So I have to take her out multiple times. And we went to the park and walked at the Arboretum and I had like 6,000 steps, which isn't a lot. Okay. I know that's not a lot. I know you're supposed to have like 10,000 or whatever, but that was a lot for me guys. Okay. And I was like, wow, wow, go me. And it said I had walked like two and a half miles, which then I'm like, how is that 6,000 steps? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I feel like my phone does it wrong. And to be fair, whenever I'm walking, my phone is like in my, like the waistband of my pants. So I don't even know if it counts my steps, but I was like, wow, I'm being so active and healthy today. And then I fell asleep also last night. It was so cute. My dog, Tilly, um, she usually, when it's just me and her, never comes up to my room and will only come up if she, like, has to and needs something. But last night, she slept in my room and she was so cute. Um, I woke up, like, in the middle of the night and she was just on my floor. And then I woke up again and she was sitting in this literal chair that I'm sitting in right now, which was just so cute and precious of her. And then around, like, 8 a.m. or something... She was trying to sit in another chair in my room, um, but she was just so cute this morning and adorable, and we went on a walk at, like, 8 in the morning, but nobody was out, which is really weird, because usually in the summer, everybody in my neighborhood is out. It's a perfect day. It's literally 66 and sunny with no humidity. Unheard of in August in Kentucky. Like, what is happening? I don't know, um, but I'm here for it. Um... So, it's been a really nice day. We've been sitting outside on the porch. I feel like I sound like a literal house mom um, because I genuinely haven't done anything besides watch the dog for the past, like, two days. But it's been fun and it's been great and I've been saying goodbye to my friends. A lot of my friends have left for college um, and I'm, like, the last one to leave because I don't leave till the 26th of August, which if you're listening to this, that is long gone. I will be in school, um, middle of September. But again, like I've said in the past few episodes, I'm like pre-recording these. So, um, haven't left for college at the moment. Hadley's moving into UGA this morning, which is exciting. Um, saying bye to friends and also literally where I live, it is like August 12th. Okay. And kids went to school yesterday. Like, people's first day of school was yesterday. And it was so weird because there was literally no traffic during the middle of the day. And I was so confused because I was like, where is everybody? And then later in the day, around 3, I started seeing school buses. And I was like, oh, people actually have school. And now I feel so weird that I'm still at home and literally everybody I know is still at school. It's it's a weird time. Anyway, let's get into the books. That's why you're here. That's why you're listening. Um, 
Before we get into it, I just want to say books I'm going to be talking about are romance, mystery, suspense novels, and fantasy recommendations. So we have a really good mix of things for fall because I don't know about y'all, but once summer is over and fall has started, I'm kind of done with the beachy reads, okay? I've had enough of my fun, light romance books for the summer. I want some dark books. I want yes romance but also I want mystery I want suspense I want fantasy okay I want something else besides like uh romance even though literally the first two books I'm gonna give are romance okay anyway it's fine um also later on in the episode I will be sharing books that I'm looking forward to reading this fall and that are coming out in the fall some of them are new haven't released yet um, so books I'm looking forward to as well. So you can add them to your TBR. But of course, before we get into it, make sure you are following me at the Girly Girl Podcast on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. Also, leave a rating and review if you like these book episodes, either on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, whatever you listen on. Okay, let's get into the books, y'all. My favorite thing to talk about. Okay, first up on my you must read this during the fall um is a book that I actually just read a few weeks ago and it's called Archer's Voice by Mia Sheridan and this is a romance okay small town romance um but it's so perfect and it's so good and it's just so fun to read let me read you the description and then I'll give you my take on it When Brie Prescott arrives in the sleepy lakeside town of Pelion, Maine, I'm not sure if I said that right, sorry, um, she hopes, she hopes against hope that this is the place where she will finally find peace she so desperately seeks. On the first day there, her life collides with Archer Hale, an isolated man who holds a secret agony of his own, a man no one else sees. Archer's voice is the story of a woman chained to the memory of one horrifying night and the man whose love is the key to her freedom. It is the story of a silent man who lives with an excruciating wound and the woman who helps him find his voice. It is the story of suffering fate and the transformative power of love. Wow. Okay. If you want to cry, if you want to get in your feels, y'all, it's fall. We got seasonal depression going on. Okay read this book. It is so cute. It is so wholesome, but also spicy. Okay. Like the storyline is wholesome, but the actual book spicy. And it is so cute and so perfect. You have Brie who's moving from Ohio. She's running from something. We don't know what it is at first. She's having um PTSD, staying up late. She can't fall asleep. She's getting sick, but she's trying to move on. So she moves to this little town where she meets this guy who at first she's like, he's rude. He won't even speak to me. Who is this guy? Everyone says he's weird. And then they start getting to know each other and they feel drawn to each other. And, you know, stuff happens from there. But it is so cute. It is so wholesome. Um, And it's really interesting, too. This isn't like a spoiler because this happens like really early in the book. But Archer actually can't talk because of his injury, which we don't know what that is until closer to the, like, middle end of the book. Um, All we know is that something happened to him, something bad, something that he won't talk about, and now he can't speak. Um, So, like, childhood trauma. They're both, like, trauma bonding, which is interesting, I guess. Um, But I actually saw this book on a YouTube video where this girl was giving book recs, and she was like, eh, it was fine, but she said what it was about and I was like oh my god I have to read that right now and then I did and I read it in like a day or two and it is just so cute and it'll just make you feel so good about yourself and the epilogue is just chef's kiss um sometimes in books the way this book ended sometimes I'm like "Eh, I don't know how I feel about that um which I'm not gonna say what it is but if you've read it or are planning on reading it you'll figure that out but it was just everything tied up so nicely. You have a happy ending. Um, and you just get really good vibes with the lakeside town. She comes summerish, it turns to fall, turns to winter. We have the seasons going while she's getting to know Archer and also kind of healing from her past trauma, which is just really interesting. 
So it's about her healing, but also her finding this guy that she really likes. So very interesting. Oh, and it's dual perspective. Okay. In case you were wondering, um, which I just always love in a romance book. It makes things so, so, so much better. Okay. Next book. This is also another romance. I know at the beginning of the episode, I was like, fall is not the time for romance books. Okay, but we can have a few. And these aren't, like, these super trashy romance books. Okay, I mean, kind of. But they're not just straight smut. Okay, we have a plot. There's a story going on. Okay, this next one is called Educating Caroline by Patricia Cabot or Cabot. I don't know how you say it. Um... And this is really, it's Bridgerton vibes, okay? So, if you watch Bridgerton, we ha- it's like Victorian era, balls, um, debutante, trying to find a husband, that type of thing. Um, this book is so good. It came out before Bridgerton, and while I was reading it, I was like, Bridgerton? Like, whoever wrote Bridgerton, that lady definitely copied this, um... Unless it was the same one. I generally don't even know who wrote Bridgerton. Um, I only have seen the show, which I know is bad. I probably should read the books. But, like, I if I've watched the show, I'm not going back and reading the books, okay? Because I know what's going to happen. Or then if the book and the movie or the TV show don't align, which I know they won't, it just bothers me. Because then I'll just be thinking about what happened in the show and be like, that's not what happened in the book. And it just ruins everything for me. Anyway, Educating Caroline. Lady Caroline Linford is horrified to discover her fiancé, the Marquis of... Oh, my God. I... Guys. In case you didn't notice, I have trouble pronouncing certain things. I just don't know what words mean. But it's this guy's name. I didn't even know what it was when I was reading the book. I just made something else up. But I'm going to try. Okay. Her fiancé, the Marquis of Winchelsea. Winchelsea? I don't know. If that's a real place too and people are British and are listening to this, I'm I'm so sorry. Okay. But anyway, Caroline finds her fiance in the arms of another woman. <gasps> what a scandal. Am I right? What a scandal. Unfortunately, Victorian society considers such masculine Oh my god. Pekka Pekka Delos. Victorian society considers such masculine peccadillos as a trifle. Canceling their imminent wedding would be unthinkable. But Caroline's wish is for the man she is to marry to desire only her, and she seeks lessons in the art of romance from the best teacher, ooh, tea, London's most notorious rake. Braden Granville may be a famous lover, but he has no intention of taking part in Caroline's scheme until he learns she has something he wants. The name of his own unfaithful fiancé's lover. As their passionate, passionate tutelage begins, sparks fly, and the lines between teacher and student fall away. Now there is just one last lesson to learn. On the subject of true love, the heart chooses its own unpredictable ways, Wow. When I tell you this book makes me want to stream, it makes me want to stream. Okay, first of all, we have like balls. Yes. We have um scandal. Yes. We have this girl, Caroline. She is so innocent where it's just crazy and everyone's like, Caroline, how are you so innocent? What is going on? How do you not know anything? And Caroline finds her fiance like in the first two chapters of the book and he is like, occupied like majorly occupied with this woman um and she's like oh my god what did I just see that is so disgusting I can't believe him I thought he loved me but now I want to make him love me and only love me and when she tells her mom her mom's like girl like everybody's husband has a mistress you just got a deal and she's like no she can't accept that so she goes to Braden Granville who um is pretty much, he gets around, okay? He gets around, and he's known for getting around, and it's this, like, older guy, so there is a bit of an age gap. I think it's, like, 10 years, because she's, like, 21, and he's, like, 30. Maybe they don't exactly say. It's just, it's a bit of an age gap, um, 
And he's like, this girl's crazy. This girl's literally so weird. She's so crazy. But then they start having lessons. Okay. And he's like teaching her stuff. Um, Yeah. It's good. If you liked Bridgerton, you would like this. If you like anything Victorian society, yes. Scandal, yes. Romance, yes. I will say at the beginning, it's a bit slow. And the writing is kind of hard to understand when you first get into it just because I thought it was kind of hard which I feel like is bad um I don't know I probably don't have the highest level of sophisticated reading obviously from my book recommendations really um but I thought it was super cute super like wholesome fun it's a fun light read very Bridgerton and it's really cool okay next up on my list of fall book recommendations is Circe by Madeline Miller. Okay, Circe is a book, it's pretty much based on like, well, it's Greek mythology, okay, and it's based on the goddess Circe and like her interactions with famous um people in mythology um because I think she was featured in like the odyssey and met a bunch of like famous characters that we all know of um but she's always been like a background character so this is focusing on her life and her story in the house of helios god of the sun and mightiest of the titans a daughter is born but circe has neither the look nor the voice of divinity and is scorned and rejected by her kin increasingly isolated she turns to mortals for companionship leading her to her to discover a power forbidden to the gods witchcraft when love drives circe to cast a dark spell wrathful zeus banishes her to the remote island of aea again i'm sorry with my pronunciation that just i don't even know um anyway there she learns to harness her occult craft drawing strength from nature but she will not always be alone many are destined to pass through circe's place of exile entwining their fates with hers the messenger god hermes the craftsman oh my god y'all i am struggling today i'm genuinely struggling um daedalus that is so wrong i that is so wrong anyway a ship bearing a golden fleece a willy odysseus on his epic voyage home there is danger for a solitary woman in this world, and Circe's independence draws the wraths of men and gods alike. To protect what she holds dear, Circe must decide whether she belongs with the deities she is born from or the mortals she has come to love. Wow, okay. At first, I'll be honest, when I was reading this book, it wasn't my favorite, but now looking back, um, I think it was really interesting. Also because I went to Greece over the summer and it was kind of cool and fun because we talked about mythology and went and like visited places. So that was interesting. But honestly, Cersei's life is so depressing because first of all, her dad doesn't want her. Her sisters, her siblings, they all hate her. They're like, you're weird. You literally sound like a human. You're ugly. You're not like us. So she's exiled. She's looking for people. She finds humans. She thinks they're interesting. And um she's always been alone her entire life and it's honestly like really depressing but it's so interesting to see who she interacts with um who she's related to and the role she played in greek mythology is really interesting um there is there are some elements of romance it is definitely not a major theme at all i would say it's more about circe finding herself dealing with isolation um family troubles, um, what it's like being a woman and alone, dealing with, like it said, like the wrath of men and gods and monsters, okay, always having to be on the defensive and also how she learns how to protect herself with witchcraft and what she gains from being on this island and her like kind of personal growth journey, which is really interesting. So, of course, if you're interested in Greek mythology, you would like this. Um, the book is can be a bit slow, 
at first, but I honestly think it was really interesting, especially too, if you were like when you were younger and read like the Percy Jackson series and you were like, oh my God, I'm obsessed with Greek mythology. This book is for you. This is like your grown up Percy Jackson series, except it's more mellow. It's about Circe. She's kind of not kind of pretty much is like an unimportant goddess and she knows that everybody knows that um but that is just really interesting and I liked Circe I thought it was interesting to learn more about Greek mythology through um like a fun book next up I have the Atlas 6 by Olive Blake the Alexandrian society caretakers of lost knowledge from the greatest civilizations of antiquity are the foremost secret society of magical academicians. I think think that's combining, like, academics and magicians. Okay. Um, In the world, those who learn, those who earn a place among the Alexandrians will secure a life of wealth, power, and prestige beyond their wildest dreams. And each decade, only the six most uniquely talented magicians are selected to be considered for initiation. Enter the latest round of six, Libby Rhodes and Nico de Verona, unwilling halves of an unfathomable whole who exert uncanny control over every element in physicality. Rena Mori, a naturalist who can intuit the language of life itself. Parissa Kamali, a telepath who can traverse the depths of the subconscious, navigating worlds inside the human mind. Calum Nova, an empath easily mistaken for a manipulative illusionist who can influence the intimate workings of a person's inner self. Finally, there's Tristan Kane, who can see through illusions to a new structure of reality, an ability so rare that neither he nor his peers can fully grasp its implications. When the candidates are recruited by the mysterious Atlas Blakely, they are told that they will have one year to qualify for initiation during which time they will be permitted preliminary access to the society's archives and judge based on their contributions to various subjects of impossibility, time and space, luck and thought, life and death. Five, they are told, will be initiated, and one will be eliminated. The six potential initiates will fight to survive the next year of their lives, and if they can prove themselves to be the best among their rivals, most of them will most of them wow guys okay this book is so fun we have like dark academia vibes so super fun cool also multiple perspectives since there are six candidates you get the perspective from each um person who gets like accepted to this program each person has a different power we have building alliances we have sabotage we have figuring out like things may not be as perfect as they might seem like There are things going on behind the scenes that we might not know about and that these characters are starting to figure out. Um, It's magic. It's, I guess that's, is magic considered sci-fi? I don't know. Um, But it's really interesting. It has a variety of characters. We have lots of diversity. Um, But yeah, 10 out of 10. I read this book a while ago, so... I don't exactly remember everything that happened. All I know is that I liked it. It was pretty fast paced, I feel like. And there was lots of sabotage and lots of revenge. And those are some of my favorite themes. I was living for it. It was great. Okay, next book is one that I think I might have mentioned in a previous episode, but I'm not sure. Um, But I'm going to mention it again because honestly, it was so good and it is so perfect for fall. And that is Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney. And this book, it's like mystery suspense novel. You're a bit nervous the whole time. Psychological thriller. You're like, what is going on? But it is so good. So perfect for fall. We have spooky vibes. Um, psychological thriller. Not like actual scary things. Um, but yeah, here we go. Here is the description of Rock, Paper, Scissors. Think you know the person you married? Think again. Things have been wrong with Mr. and Mrs. Wright for a long time. It's funny, too, um, because their last name is Wright, but with a W. Um, Just everything about this book is just so clever how things work out. Okay, anyway, sorry. 
Um, when Adam and Amelia win a weekend away to Scotland, it might just be what their marriage needs. A self-confessed workaholic and screenwriter, Adam Wright, has lived with face blindness his whole life. He can't recognize friends or family or even his own wife. Each anniversary, the couple exchanges traditional gifts, paper, cotton, pottery, tin. And each year, Adam's wife writes him a letter that she never lets him read. Until now. They both know this weekend will make or break their marriage, but they didn't randomly win this trip. One of them is lying and someone doesn't want them to live happily ever after. Ten years of marriage, ten years of secrets, and an anniversary they will never forget. Oh my freaking god, guys. When I tell you, this book is just so smartly written, okay? It is just so creative how things work together. And it's really interesting because you get, I believe it's multiple perspectives. And also you get to see the letters that the wife is writing um, when it relates to the gifts. So it's like going back and forth between past and present. They're stuck in this, in Scotland, having a weekend away. Things start going wrong. And true colors start unfolding. Also, it's really interesting because, like the description said, the husband has face blindness. So, like, he can't recognize anybody he sees. He can't even recognize his own wife, which is just so crazy how everything works out. And it's really good, like, wintry fall vibes. Um, There's snowstorm. They get stuck. It is good. Okay, guys, it is good. If you're looking for a thriller... If you're looking for something with suspense, with mystery, you want to figure something out, read this book, y'all. It is so freaking good. It is addicting. I got the book from my older sister and she told me I had to read it and it was just so good. Or at least I think it was my older sister. I don't know. It might have been someone from school. Honestly, I was, I recorded an episode the other day and I realized um, sometimes I say things without actually thinking them through and I'm like, did that? Was that right? Like, in the last episode, I'm pretty sure I said I had a boyfriend sophomore year, but that just wasn't right. It was freshman year. Um, but I was like, eh, whatever. Anyway, okay, next book. Verity by Colleen Hoover. Okay, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest Colleen Hoover fan. I feel like people are obsessed with her, like, weirdly, like, extremely obsessed with her. This is one of the few books I've read from her, which I really did like. Mainly because it was a psychological thriller and not just like romancy, but it was a dark book. It was really good. Um, so Colleen, you killed it with Verity. Here we go. Lowen Ashley is a struggling writer on the brink of financial ruin when she accepts the job offer of a lifetime. Jeremy Crawford, husband of best-selling author Verity Crawford has hired Lowen to complete the remaining books in a successful series his injured wife is unable to finish. Lowen arrives at the Crawford home, ready to sort through years of Verity's notes and outlines, hoping to find enough material to get her started. What Lowen doesn't expect to uncover in the chaotic office is an unfinished autobiography Verity never intended for anyone to read. Page after page of bone-chilling admissions, including Verity's recollection of what happened the day her daughter died, Lowen decides to keep the manuscript hidden from Jeremy, knowing its contents would devastate the already grieving father. But as Lowen's feelings for Jeremy begin to intensify, she recognizes all the ways she could benefit if he were to read his own wife's words. After all, no matter how devoted Jeremy is to his injured wife, a truth this horrifying would make it impossible for him to continue to love her. Y'all, y'all, this book, wow, okay, um, yes, there is romance, but, like, I feel like the psychological thriller part is a bigger role, um, also, the romance is kind of weird, because this wife is, like, injured, and she's just, like, on bed rest, and then they're like doing stuff in the other room. I don't know. It's that's kind of weird to me. Um, but anyway, it's so interesting. We have the wife, the husband, and Lowen. Um, and Lowen gets to read this so-called autobiography and figure out like what 
um, Verity has done or has known since she met her husband, Jeremy. And it's so interesting to see everything she writes and the way it ends. It's crazy, y'all. This book is so crazy, but it's so good. And everybody has to read it. And I don't know what else to say about it because I don't want to give any spoilers. But I swear, if you read one book from this list, read that one, okay? Because it is just so good. If you want a psychological thriller, so good. And if you're already like, oh my god, Colleen Hoover, it's Colleen Hoover. So you can read it and enjoy it. Next up, we have Kingdom Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. And yes, I've mentioned this book so many times, but there's a reason for that, okay, everybody? And that is that I love this book. This is one of my favorite series. It is so good. It is so interesting. Let me read you the description. Two sisters, one brutal murder, a quest for vengeance that will unleash hell itself, and an intoxicating romance. Woohoo! Okay. Amelia and her twin sister, Vittoria, are strahi, witches who live secretly among humans, avoiding notice and persecution. One night, Vittoria misses dinner service at the family's renowned Sicilian restaurant. Amelia soon finds the body of her beloved twin, desecrated beyond belief. Devastated, Amelia sets out to find her sister's killer and seek vengeance at any cost, even if it means using dark magic that's been long forbidden. Then Amelia meets Wrath, one of the wicked, princes of hell she has been warned against in tales since she was a child. Wrath claims to be on Amelia's side tasked by his master with solving the series of women's murders on the island. But when it comes to the wicked, nothing is as it seems. Y'all, this book. This book is so good. Um, First of all, we have the seven princes of hell, and each of them are one of the seven deadly sins. So like wrath, envy, gluttony, pride. I don't know. I don't know why I couldn't think of more. Um, anyway, like those types of things. And that's like their personality. It's like how girls sometimes or people in general will take the personality of like their horoscope really to heart. But this is like the version with, um, the seven princes of hell. Okay. And one of them, like wrath, he's like angry. Okay. He is angry or like envy like pride okay they each have their own personality trait and we have this witch girl and she's on a mission okay she is on a mission and she will do whatever it takes to get what she wants and it's just so good also there is a second book in the series and they're making a third one which i just want to read so bad i honestly don't know when it's coming out hopefully soon um i feel like it's either gonna be in the winter or the spring of this coming year but i'm really not sure but this book is interesting we have magic witches um princes okay and like a forbidden romance it's good y'all it's good check it out next up is a book that i read literally so long ago but i was looking through my goodreads to try to find books that reminded me of fall and this one really did um it is a historical fiction romance book um it's either what is it world war one or world war two i can't remember it's called the bronze horseman by paulina simons and um it's focused in russia the golden skies the translucent twilight the white clouds all hold the promise of youth of love of eternal renewal The war has not yet touched this city of fallen grandeur, or the lives of two sisters, Tatiana and Dasha Medanova, who share a single room in a cramped apartment with their brother and parents. Their world is turned upside down when Hitler's armies attack Russia and begin their unstoppable blitz to Leningrad. Yet, there is light in the darkness. Tatiana meets Alexander, a brave young officer in the Red Army strong and self-confident yet guarding a mysterious and troubled past he is drawn to tatiana and she to him starvation desperation and fear soon grip their city 
during the terrible winter of the merciless German siege. Tatiana and Alexander's impossible love threatens to tear the Metanova family apart and expose the dangerous secret Alexander so carefully protects, a secret as devastating as the war itself. As the lovers are swept up in the br- brutal tides that will change the world and their lives forever. Guys, this book is genuinely so depressing. And if you're interested in like historical fiction or war, um, it's really interesting. And it's based on something that actually did happen. Like the siege of Leningrad lasted so freaking long. So it's really interesting. It's sad. It's depressing. But there is hope. We have love in this. It's also interesting because the love interest is the soldier. So you have the fear of when he's going away and fighting. And also it's interesting to see like the hope the Russians have against the Germans, even though they're lacking on supplies. It's entering winter. They don't have food. There's no heat. There's no not enough supplies to keep like the standard of living up. People are dying. People are dead on the streets. Um, And it's honestly so depressing, gut wrenching. But it's such a great book. Um, and I think everyone should read it. It is a bit painful to read. Um, trigger warnings, like violence, war, um, starvation, death, okay? Um, but it's good. If you're in your depressed fall girl era, read it. Or even if you're not, it's just interesting and everyone should like educate themselves on, you know. What goes on in the world, even if it's not, like, exactly what happened, it's just interesting to hear, like, a story of something from, like, an actual event that actually happened, um, like, fairly recently, I guess. Um, okay, so those were all the books that I, um, personally read and are suggesting. Now moving on to some of the books that I haven't read yet that I've heard about, I've heard good things, but I am hoping to read this fall. So books on my TBR and I have four of them. Okay, first up is Thank You for Listening by Julia Whalen. And I actually saw this book on Emily Henry's um, Instagram. If you don't know Emily Henry, she wrote Beach Read, People We Meet on Vacation, um, and she has a new book. I don't know why I can't remember what it's called. I don't know. Anything she writes, I read. I'm obsessed with her. So if she suggests something, I want to read it, okay, because I trust her. Um, She also has a new book coming out in the spring. I was going to put it on this list, but then I realized it literally won't be out anytime close to when this episode is coming out. So I was like, mm, no, maybe we'll just leave that for another time. Okay, but here's the description of thank you for listening. For Sawani Chester, being an audiobook narrator is a long way from her old dreams, but the days of being a star on film sets are long behind her. She's found success and satisfaction from the inside of a sound booth, and it allows her to care for her beloved ailing grandmother. When she arrives in Las Vegas last minute for a book convention, Sawani unexpectedly spends a whirlwind night with a charming stranger. Woohoo! On her return home, Sawani discovers one of the world's most beloved romance novelists wants her to perform her last book with Brock McKnight, the industry's hottest, most secretive voice. Sawani doesn't buy what romance novels are selling, not after her own dreams were tragically cut short and she stopped narrating them them years ago. But her admiration of the late author and the opportunity to get her grandmother more help makes her decision for her. As Suwani begins to work on the book, resurrecting her old romance pseudonym, she and Brock forge a real connection, hidden behind the comfort of anonymity. Soon she is dreaming again, but secrets are revealed and the realities of life come crashing down around her once more. If she can learn to risk everything for her for desires she has long buried, she will discover a world of intimacy and acceptance she never believed could be hers. So, romance, okay? Also, I feel like, obviously, from that description, we can tell Brock McKnight is definitely the guy she had a whirlwind night with, her charming stranger, okay? And that is my favorite thing that happens in a book. When they meet, like, before, and then they see each other again, and they're, like, forced, like, forced proximity, yes, okay? Also, it's just cute, and it's different, and I love books about books, okay? Okay? So, like, books about writers, books about publishers, books, I guess, now about audiobooks. 
like what okay that just sounds so cool also really interesting super cute so if you're looking for a cute little romance this sounds like it i'm excited to read it so definitely check out next up is malibu rising by taylor jenkins reed this book i feel like is fairly popular or was fairly popular like a year or two ago i just haven't gotten around to it it was on my summer tbr and i just never read read it um i was was reading something else but i really want to read it because i think it sounds interesting it's like a mystery um but like mystery hollywood style so interesting four famous siblings throw an epic party to celebrate the end of the summer but over the course of 24 hours their lives will change forever malibu august 1983 it's the day of nina riva's annual end of the summer party and the anticipation is at a fever pitch everyone wants to be around the famous rivas Nina, the talented surfer and supermodel, brothers Jay and Hud, one a championship surfer, the other a renowned photographer, and their adored baby sister Kit. Together, the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as the offspring of the legendary singer Mick Reba. The only person not looking forward to the party of the year is Nina herself, who never wanted to be the center of attention and who has also been very publicly abandoned by her pro-tennis player husband. Oh, and maybe Hud, because it is long past time to confess something to the brother from whom he's been inseparable since birth. Jay, on the other hand, is counting the minutes until nightfall, when the girl he can't stop thinking about promised she'll be there. And Kit has a couple secrets of her own, including a guest she invited without consulting anyone. By midnight, the party will be completely out of control. By morning, the Riva mansion will have gone up in flames. But the first spark in the early hours before dawn, alcohol will flow, the music will play, and the loves and secrets that shape this family's generation will all come bubbling to the surface. Malibu Rising is a story about one unforgettable night in the life of the family. The night they each have to choose what they will keep from the people who made them and what they will leave behind. Wow. I honestly just got goosebumps. Um, not gonna lie. But that's just so interesting because we have family. I'm guessing it's gonna be multiple perspectives. Also, I love when things happen, like at the beginning of the book, like something bad happens, and then it's like the whole entire book is leading up to that. So the same way it starts the same way it's gonna end which I think is interesting. I don't know if that book, if this book is, oh my god, wow, eh, tongue-tied today. I don't know if this is how that book is going to go, but it kind of sounds like that. Um, Really interesting though, definitely on my TBR. Next book is Things We Never Got Over by Lucy Score, and this is also a romance. I guess most of the books on my TBR are romance. Um, Looks like small town romance, um, We have Naomi, who is running away from her wedding, um, and she ends up, like, having an evil twin or something, and, um, Naomi is now stuck with her niece, and she is in a random town with no car, no job, no plan, and no home, an 11-year-old to take care of, and there's also this guy, Knox who um lives on his own we have broody broody guy um he doesn't want to deal with women anything complicated people um but he decides to help naomi and figure out like how he can get her out of trouble but then he figures out oh he can't leave her alone and there's actual danger following them yeah crazy so we got romance we got um i guess what is that called the trope where it's like the girl is super like bubbly and fun and then the guy is like brooding what is that i don't know um very opposite personalities interesting okay next foul lady fortune by chloe gong if you haven't heard of chloe gong she wrote um a book based on romeo and juliet it's like a retelling of that why can i not think of what it's called um i don't know it's like based in shanghai we have rival gangs it's really good but this is a book that she's releasing that's coming out this fall that i think is really gonna be cool it's 1931 in shanghai and the stage is set for a new decade of intrigue 
Four years ago, Rosalind Lang was brought back from the brink of death, but the strange experiment that saved her also stopped her from sleeping and aging and allows her to heal from any wound. In short, Rosalind cannot die. Now, desperate for redemption from her treacherous past, she uses her abilities as an assassin for her country, codename Fortune. But when the Japanese Imperial Army begins its invasion march, Rosalind's mission pivots. A series of murders is causing unrest in Shanghai, and the Japanese are under suspicion. Rosalind's new orders are to infiltrate foreign society and identify the culprits behind the terror plot before more of her people are killed. To reduce suspicion, however, she must pose as the wife of another nationalist spy, Orion Hong. And, and though Rosalind finds Orion's cavalier attitude and playboy demeanor infuriating, she is willing to work with him for the greater good. But Orion has an agenda of his own, and Rosalind has secrets she wants to keep buried. As they both attempt to unravel the conspiracy, the two spies soon find that there are deeper and more horrifying layers to this mystery than they ever imagined. Wow, okay. So, if you read the other books, Chloe Gong wrote, um, Rosalind, they kind of mentioned her. She was supposedly a sister, um, that had died, or that was like a traitor, I think. I swear they said she died, I don't know. Honestly, I might be remembering that wrong, but she was, like, not in the story, but mentioned a few times, so that's interesting that this book is about her. So, we have spying, we have, I guess, like, historical fiction, 1931, Shanghai, um, super interesting. I'm guessing there might be a little bit of love interest with her and Orion, but it doesn't seem like that much of, like, a major point to the plot, Um, But super interesting. I really like Chloe Gong and her writing. And this book is coming out September 27th. So really soon. So keep your eye on that. And if y'all liked the book, books that I recommended in this episode, make sure you leave a rating and review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. Follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest at the Girly Girl Podcast. And you can also follow me on Goodreads just by searching Carmen Applegate if you want to keep up with me and more of what I'm reading throughout the year. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. Have an amazing week. Bye!